Hello, Tora Cat. Hey, Stris. I'm so ready for six star Ari. Yeah, should be should be pretty good. I plan on testing out at least two different uh, builds this morning. Hello, Morgan. Yes, yeah, so we have pretty much everything except the gemstones, and we actually were able to get one of the gemstones. It is nice that the constellation, not the constellation, the battle pass does actually give you a good amount of gemstones for the champions, especially like we got a big amount for uh, Heimerdinger or for the Bandle City. But it is nice that the gemstone upgrades are actually going to start being a bit more accessible. So that, that should be solid. I mean, really, the battle pass, it's given you a solid amount of pretty much everything but six star materials. While there is only one golden uh, star vessel, there are like three of the silver ones. So each one of those giving you like five to ten of uh, different region star crystals is actually pretty good. Been theory crafting about Strength of Stone Gatebreaker Ari. Since the negative one doesn't matter for it, every time you summon Ari, she gets extra HP. Didn't test it yet. Uh, from what I've heard, with Strike Relics and Strength of Stone, the strike goes off before they get formidable. I know at least that's how people tested Stalker's Blade Kane. Uh, so you could test Gatebreaker, but I think it's going to still strike with your attack before it moves over to your health. I wish the Battle Pass had an overflow mechanic. Have no reason to go for new Battle Pass quest now because I'm done with it. Yeah, I agree. So I have... I was working on one of the quests right here. I was four out of five to get the 25 Battle Pass coins. And this is when I actually fully finished the Battle Pass. I was like, oh, I don't need this anymore. But... I mean, I don't... Any sort of overflow mechanic would... Well... I guess one thing they could actually do, just so it was something but not a lot and not too impactful, is... Like, I think any other resource they'd put in here, like champion fragments, wild fragments, any of that is going to be too valuable and make people feel like they're forced to grind it. But if they added in just the green stardust or like green shard currency so we can try to get some more of that for like the gold the gold vaults and stardust if they maybe had in there like every level even just got like a hundred so it's something very small and most people just be like oh that's not really worth it but for those of us that have completed be like you know what might as well the quest will give me a bunch of the extra tiers, and I'm still getting something. Because I feel like if they put wild fragments, then people are just going to sit there and grind it all day, and they don't really want you to have a repeatable way to just grind out these sorts of currencies. So I think it wouldn't be bad if they had a little bit of an overflow, but they have to make sure it wasn't really too good at all yeah finished my battle pass with other new missions and now they're meaningless yeah but they wanted they wanted the battle pass to be easy to complete uh because they want make they want to make sure that pretty much everyone can complete it so any of us that are more like hardcore players or just play the game very regularly we're going to complete it super easily but that's good yes but Ari gets formidable permanently after that that, yeah, that, uh, that, I guess, could work, potentially. That would be interesting. Yeah, I feel like just Stardust would give me a reason to still grind. Yeah, Stardust or the, um, green fragments, whatever they're called, shards. Either of those at low quantities, so people don't feel like they need to grind, but is a bit of a reward for people that continually play. That wouldn't be wouldn't be bad. One wild fragment for every fifty overflow. <laughs> I mean, then people would just get 
more annoyed that the their numbers for Wild Fragments gets way off. Good morning, Winston. All right, we'll go ahead and hop in. So yeah, we have our six star Ari. We have all of the upgrades except the some of the gemstones. So getting scaled with a recall and you know all the stuff here. I'll go out here so you can see the six star because my camera slightly blocks it. So just when we recall an ally, it strikes the enemy nexus. So we can get this with a whole bunch of our units and a couple different builds that will be very good for this. So going for one of the Him of Valor builds, I know is going to be very strong. But I think I wanted to try one that's a little bit more focused on kind of our whole board and not just dropping Ari and recalling her with him. We'll probably test that one next. But yeah, constant nexus strikes. This will be pretty good. I asked Riot to remove my extra wild fragment. I'd hate that to happen again. Yeah. Yeah, Oath. Oath would be interesting. Because they do have giant units. So yeah, that could also hit pretty hard. All right, so the relics for that we're going to try this time. I don't think this is going to be like the strongest build for the six star, but kind of a more general Ari build focusing on all of her units. So we're just going to go for Essence Theft. Her relic, get that homecoming, and ways to buff up our Ari. Fear Cleaving Axe will again boost up our board. And then Cease and Desist. The impact is really nice. We can get a lot of attacks in. And then uh, the free attack can be good. Now, one thing that I thought about is the scissors. And it's good and bad. Yes, we get a extra unit that is attacking, but it also always makes our unit we're recalling strike the nexus and then they should die because they're now ephemeral so that's great to save our hand space but now our units are no longer scaling because they're getting recalled immediately dying normally with Ari, you're recalling a unit and then playing it again for free so it's just getting stronger and stronger and spectral scissors kind of shuts that down so probably something we'll have to try out at some point because maybe that's worth the trade-off just getting the extra units to get more damage you really just need to push damage immediately. But uh, yeah, we'll try this and see how it goes. And then, yeah, we'll just drop a uh, quick ad break. So you can go to the bathroom, go get a drink quickly. Go ahead and do that right now before we get into a adventure. Spectral at six stars is pretty good, in my opinion. It might be. Yeah, the the extra damage might be worth it. It just seems like it'd be a little sad to try to recall, like, your dancing droplet, and then it's just dead after, like, your first attack. So, yeah, it's definitely a bit of a trade-off, but just going kind of full aggro could be worth it. Also, welcome to the six-star Ari Club. <laughs> Yeah, it seems like a lot of people did get the, the six-star Ari. I think I'm going to try to start getting six stars a little bit more frequently just for for the content. It is unfortunately unfortunate, though, that for the most part, I'm just going to have to flat out buy most of them, which will be sad, but... It is kind of my job, so it's a bit easier to justify. But still, I've been trying not to go too crazy. Oh. I think, yeah, we'll, we'll load into the nightmare here while we wait for people to get, get back. Would be cool if we could toggle stars after we unlock them. Yes, that would be nice, especially for, like, Nora, because... Nora is one that I'm kind of worried about getting her six star because I think I'd prefer actually just having followers. At least you can write it off as a business expense. Yes, that is one of the main thing helping me be actually get these. <laughs> All right, let's go and see what we get for our first power. Summoning two units is pretty good, making sure Ari actually has units to recall. Not bad. Most of the time we target our units, we're giving them like they're getting recalled, so the barrier doesn't really matter. Yeah, I think just getting some extra units should be fine. All right, let's go for Sneaky Zeebles. Mm. 
I'd imagine after getting to six stars, some champs get way too easy. I would say I haven't seen, I haven't gotten any six star champ that I was like, man, I regret getting them to six stars. It's always just like, oh, this is even more fun than they were before. Uh, yeah, we'll drop our Ari. The forest and I are one. Morning Toast, what build are you trying for Ari? Follower centric or Ari centric? Uh, so this one is follower centric and we'll be doing one after this that is focused on Ari. Also, six star Ari seems like it could be one that gets boring after a bit. Uh, we'll see. I mean, it is, it is possible. All right, so we can just attack and do as much damage as possible. I mean, I suppose we could actually go like this. If we wanted. Nah, I'm fine. We'll, we'll just attack right here. Yeah, pretty, pretty solid damage. Now we can just recall our Ari and end the game. I mean, we can also recall our Dancing Droplet as well. So, sure. GG. If you manage to get two Aries on the board, it's pretty fun with this build. You proc Axe twice and Impact hits three times. Yeah, that would be <laughs> pretty good. I got my Lux Luminous six stars with Mana Gem. It's so much fun. Did the 6.5 easily with her. Yeah, Lux Illuminated is one that I would really love to try because she's already such a strong champion that I feel like once you actually complete her constellation, she's just going to be absolutely ridiculous. Like when Constellations first came out, she was one that I thought looked like one of the strongest out of everyone. Uh, let's grab the Yordle Squire. Sure. The others are kind of just too expensive for us. All right, support champion. Ice up, hike. Uh, we could at least play that one for free. The Void Lane actually wouldn't be terrible if we wanted to stack a whole bunch of keywords because we could potentially play it, get a keyword, recall it, have it get another keyword and just keep doing that. But I mean, we're just going to end so fast. I think we'll go for Pike mostly for the uh, Hammer Snout. Yeah, that's fine. Item chest, monastery, gold chest. Uh, Monastery lets us cut a card. Sure, let's go for Soldier here. Yeah, Lux Illuminate is one that I don't feel like a lot of people... A lot of people talk about. I have 90 Vandal Nova Shards right now. Plan on getting 6 star Vex with it. Nice. Uh, let's give it a Squire. And yeah, we can hold on to the rest. All right, we can drop our Ari. Uh, do we care about dropping our sparring student? Uh, this probably won't count as a recall. Otherwise, it should have the keyword recall in there. What's the day's like? like that. Uh, we could attack with our other units, but they just get blocked by the encroaching mist. I think we can be fine like this. Yeah, that that three impact is actually really nice. So good, good call on the cease and desist. The more I play with it, the more it's like, yeah, that that impact alone makes it worth it. And then the free attack really is just like 
a nice bonus if the game ends up going out on a bit longer. Um, let's recall our Ari. And then we can replay her. Sure is dark, eh? The forest and I are one. Just thinking about get Heimer just to test him out. I doubt he's gonna be better than Vex or Yumi. Yeah. Heimer is one that I'm I'm really interested to see how he is. Hey LOR never die, welcome. The balanced spirit may still fall. Uh, we can just sacrifice this one. Yeah, I feel like with the six star, unless you're going up against the hardest challenges, you'll normally just be able to end before you even level her. GG. I was a big fan of chain effect cards in other uh, card games, so looking forward to that. Problem with six star Lux is that I don't really doesn't really change your gameplay. It does give you some mana after you attack to better use Crown Guard inheritance. Yeah, I really liked Crown Guard on her, so to me, her six star looks kind of perfect for the way I play her. I locked Diana like you suggested yesterday. Got her to level twenty five in under two hours. Thank you for the suggestion. Diana is is pretty great. She's yeah, so good. Kind of messed around with cease and desist Gale Force build on Ari. It's kind of goofy, but if you make it a couple rounds to proc the free attack and start rallying each turn, yeah, that does sound like a kind of cheesy build. A little bit more of a meme build, but it sounds fun. Got Jack to level twenty today. Thinking if I should try my build Nova on Misfortune or wait until Jack gets the Constellation because I love playing him. I mean, the Misfortune one is great, so I would probably just go for that because we don't know when Jack is ever going to get upgraded. And I don't think that's going to happen at like at the earliest. It would be the new year. So you have a couple months before I think that would really happen likely. Allheimer 6 star does is give you tempo instantly. There's no build up or fight with the AI to get tempo, so it's a lot better in some more difficult adventures. Uh, summon a Powder Monkey list. Uh, Healing Nexus. Don't really. I mean, like. Yeah, I don't really care about any of these, to be honest. We'll just go for the list. Maybe we can get a free attack going. Is there a card we want to cut? Bone Skewer is okay. Are we ever going to use it? Probably not. Yeah, let's go for the Monastery. Actually, I guess... Oh, it did hit the Bone Skewer. I forgot that... Uh, I was like, it only... It gives you the option of cards to cut. It's not like the card shops where it's like, hey, here's all of your cards. Cut whatever you want other than champions. So glad to hit that. So we could cut another card, but I think we're good. Let's try to go for a shop for an extra upgrade. <laughs> Two cost deny. Sure, let's go for the Mage Seeker. Yes, if, if you're going to get six stars, you really do want to get her relic. So... Yeah, that's that is something to probably bear in mind. Her her epic relic does make her six star incredibly powerful. So that's definitely worth getting if you have that relic. But yeah, that is that's a good point. Her her relic is kind of needed for it. All right, let's get rid of a couple of these.
yeah, I tried the Echoing Spirit on Misfortune. It definitely works. Like, when I, the adventure I ran it through, I still won in the first round every single time. Uh, but I definitely think the Shock and Awe is better if you can get it. Alright, we can drop our Dancing Droplet. It is funny that, like, we have such a simple board, but we actually are putting out a ton of damage. And a large amount of that is that stacking impact. Because especially when you run the impact with your Fear Cleaving Axe, the boost also increases it, which is... Pretty, pretty great. Not again. Ah. My internet seems to be fine, so... Like, I just... Like, I pulled up uh, YouTube and it seems to be fine. I think it's Twitch. I don't think it's on my side. Alright, we're just gonna pause a second for everyone to get back. Oh, man. Alright. Uh, so we could just recall our... Alright, get a strike in... Sure, let's go ahead and drop this here. This is progress. <laughs> Control the majors. Keep the peace. My cause is righteous. Go on, shake my hand. Oh man, we have so much damage. It's like we can't attack right here. But we could also just use this essentially burst speed recall. GG. Twitch is using deny on the stream. And we're all using deny on Twitch's deny. <laughs> uh. Yeah, so this is the, the 4.5 nightmare. Just because it's so good to, to test. Because that could be a problem with both Galio and like Lissandra, is it just kind of takes forever. Uh, list, Steel Tempest. I think we actually will grab Steel Tempest just for the champion draw, in case we don't get our Ari. This is an interesting six star, though. I'm wondering if there's going to be any monthly challenges that really lock this in or make this really good. Like, maybe the one where every time you strike, you double your power. If those stats get kept, then that could be crazy. Yeah, it seems pretty, pretty good. Uh, let's go for shop. Target an ally with a single target spell. Copy it on your weakest. Most of our spells aren't single target. Which is sad. They do. Ari is the best champ for the forest workout. I tested it. All right, good to know. Running the same nightmare with Seth, a bit rough, but doing okay so far. Seth's pretty good. As long as you can survive the early game, you're fine. I think let's actually do a reroll here. We have seven of them. Sure, just this is a really good common power to grab. It's so simple, but solid. And sure, like it's a good card. But it is reducing the chance we're going to draw some of the things we actually need more. Uh, I think we're fine, actually. We have more than enough power as it is. I think let's cut the Maker. While it's good, we're not really going to need to play it at all. And let's go for Fiora. I would gut down the 
The good thing with this six star actually is it lets you play a much more defensive play style because you can just sit back and recall your units defensively and still be getting damage in. So even if you can't get through, like if you don't have overwhelm or you don't have enough elusives, you can still get a lot of damage even if the enemy has a board full of blockers. Also, the hold it is so good, especially for like the nightmares or the Swain adventure. All right, that's that's fine. All right, let's go ahead and attack with everyone. All right, it says in like 30 seconds there might be an upcoming ad break, but that shouldn't happen because it hasn't been half an hour, so hopefully Twitch is just trolling me. But if one drops, we'll, we'll hold off. What do I do? What don't I do? It might be because of the crash. Oh, that's a... That's a good point, yeah. It probably... It thinks the stream restarted, and so normally right after stream, after like five minutes, it drops one. That is, yeah, probably what's going on. Can't believe we've been this long. Thanks for all the content, Toast. Thanks for the continued support. Appreciate it. I'll see all this world has to offer. All right, we'll go ahead and drop our homecoming. And GG. Man, have I actually been streaming for seven months? Goodness, that is kind of crazy. That's, yeah, wow. <laughs> uh, let's go for mana deposit, because that'll be extremely broken. Uh, let's go for power. More of a United stacked against them. All right, add dropped. So we're going to pause and wait for everyone. Oh, yeah. Stupid stream crash. We were wanting to get through the entire adventure without ever having an add drop. Yeah, we'll probably go for stacked against them. It's not going to be too crazy for us since we're not going to hit over 40 cards. But it'll let us play something for free. And also with the man deposit, we don't need to use it on Ari because she's going to be essentially free as well. Monitor specs? <laughs> Uh, I'm not sure about my monitors offhand. Oh. All right, just about 10 seconds. All right, everyone should be back. Uh, let's go ahead and grab the stacked against them. Stretch first a little, a little late. I should do that next ad break. Item chest or chamber. Uh, we could go for the spell shield. Sure. Yeah, I think I'll be, I'll be fine. Anyone else have issues accessing their in-game purchase history in LOR? I haven't tried recently, so can't really say. 
Although I would say LOR has been a little bit buggy this week. Let's get rid of a couple of these. Game bugged out while buying a golden reliquary. Didn't see what I received. Oh, that's, that sucks. Did you buy the Nova bundle or get lucky? Uh, for this one, I just bought the, the Nova bundle. All right, so we'll drop our Dancing Droplet because we can play it for free. Drop our R that we can also play. Sadly, we didn't get any of our recall spells. Uh, sure. How'd you do that? The forest surrounds us. And punch. Let's just push as much damage as we can. Too slow. Find your own. It's a trap. I can learn from watching you. All right, so we could play our homecoming. Sure. Although I guess they can't really do anything. And yeah, we can actually recall a landmark, but most of them they can just play for free. Sure, we can drop this here. Hopefully they attack, but I kind of... Oh, wow, they did attack. Thank you, that is genuinely surprising. Oh, we drew the wrong champion. We were trying to draw another copy of our Ari, so we could do a recall and uh, be able to end that round. Alright, GG. So yeah, Ari is feeling very good. I definitely need to try her into some very difficult challenges and see see how she kind of ranks up to some other of the six-star champions. Because like any of the other six-star champions would also be able to just like destroy as well. So even though she's doing really good, it's kind of hard to say. One cost recall isn't bad. I guess we could play this for free, but we do need more recalls right now. Let's go for chamber. And shop. I don't think we're really getting any kills outside of combat. So I think this is going to do nothing for us. Sure, that's fine. All right, epic champion. No, let's go there. So, hmm. Bone Scryer. <laughs> One of six star Ari can do this week's 6.5. Yeah, we'll have to see. We might, we might try that today. This looks fine. Multiple Aries, bunch of recall spells. So using our cost reduction on Ari isn't as impactful, but we kind of have nothing else we really want to play. The forest and I are one. All right, so we can just try to recall her a bunch of times this round. I go where the wind flows for now. Sadly, they are not playing anything. Uh, let's see. Dancing Droplet, not too bad. I'll see all this world 
All right, nice little, <laughs> nice little ODK. GG. Naturally. OTK casually, <laughs> yeah. Ari is definitely very aggressive and puts out a ton of damage. Hmm, I like that dancing droplet. Uh, when you play a spell, grant me 1-1. One, one. Yeah, we are going to be playing or trying to play some spells to recall her, so this should give us some solid scaling. We do have five rerolls, so we could try to get something a little bit crazy. Sure, let's just see if we get something wacky like Black Lever or something like that. Uh, Reckoner's Mark, Free Attack, or Cost Reduction. Cost Reduction doesn't really matter since we can play her for free. So, doesn't, yeah, not too much of a point. Uh, Quick Strike's interesting. Reckoner's Mark is also funny. Quick Strike we could potentially do because most of their units should be stunned right away sure let's let's try this out i think we can actually make it work without dying hopefully uh what do we want to get rid of yeah we don't really need the red fin we got it because it was free but yeah we're fine let's go for misfortune sure you can handle me. i just noticed i have 80 noxus gemstones all the 6.5 wins are slowly stacking up. Yeah, that's the thing is we're getting the wins from the weeklies. We're also getting gemstones from the monthlies. And granted, it's not a lot from either of those. But if you play consistently, that's going to add up. And then we're also now getting a solid amount from the battle pass, which is happening every single month. And then also we are, if again, you're playing the game a lot, probably going to start picking up ones from the Emporium as well, if you already have like the other other items in there. So it'll still be slow, but you will start getting gemstone upgrades. Let's get rid of Sparring Student and let's hold on to all the spells and hope we draw our Ari. Y'all never buy the Emporium one? I mean, for me, if I have, I have literally everything else. So the Stardust just doesn't matter. I have nothing else to use it on. And after next month, I'm going to have all the epic relics again, so. I agree, though, if you have anything else. It is worth spending it on that. Uh, so we can drop our Ari. They can't stop us. I mean, they might play that spell that they always have. Yeah. Uh, we could recall a unit. But I think we just want to save our recalls probably for Ari. This will give us someone. Yeah, this is fine. Never stop shooting. How'd you manage to get the new epic so fast, by the way? Were you saving the original three bundles that gave golden reliquaries? Yes. So I never I never got those at the time. And I already had all the the epics. And so when they dropped the new epics, I got a couple of those older bundles to be able to get uh, a lot of the new, new epics faster. Uh, let's just keep dropping our Ari. Looking for trouble. The free attack is really nice for our impact as well as our uh, fear cleaving axe. Uh, sure. Well, we're probably going to end this round and she's stunned. Might as well get rid of one of their blockers.
looking for trouble. It found you funny. They're not even blocking. <laughs> GG. Naturally. Um. It's so BS that one of his upgrades is locked behind a gemstone and six star. Yeah, that was that was not good planning. They should have swapped that node and the gemstone one so you could actually get the get that upgrade, which is is unfortunate. All right, six star Ari is very fast. While this is still a fun build, it didn't work out as well trying to focus on our units because Ari alone could just end the game so quickly every time we're recalling her. I mean, you can use the recall on other units as well, but it normally is just kind of best on, on Ari. But yeah, incredibly powerful. I look forward to seeing what she can do into some of the tougher challenges because she was able to just easily blast through this one. I do think for Darius, though, you probably don't even necessarily want to get that upgrade. Yeah, like for me, I kind of refuse to get any gemstone upgrades other than the any that are hitting your entire region. So like the support cards have an additional item and the Celestial Fortune to get higher chance of getting stuff. I don't think I'm going to get any of these unless I literally have no other gemstone upgrades possible. So like the one reroll for Noxian Champions or the XP, like these are always the ones that I aim for. And I'm just going to always avoid the the others. So I just don't think it's don't think it's worth it. All right, let's go ahead and try a Ari focus build, even though that one was still pretty focused on, on Ari. Let's go for Echoing Spirit. I like the Hidden Tome. I think I went past it. I think him is near the top. Yeah, him of Valor. All right, so this is solid. Now, based on your personal preference, you could swap out one of these for the uh, secret technique to double the amount of stats you gain from a spell, which is solid. I like the Hidden Tome because it makes it so we can play our redoubled Valor as soon as we drop our Ari, which is really nice. And I like the Echoing Spirit to make sure we have our Ari and then we have free recalls with the charm. So that's why I like this, but it would be a little bit less consistent, but you would get way more power from the secret technique. So you could swap that out uh, with one of these if you wanted. But this is... Should be really strong. Should be fun. Sadly, it does not affect the XP you get from Cosmic Blessings. Oh, that is, that is pretty sad. Uh, alternatively, you can run Lost Chapter if you don't have Tome. Practically the same thing. Yes, if you don't have, have Hidden Tome, going for Lost Chapter is yeah, pretty much going to be the exact same. Because, I mean, Ari might level, but yeah, even if she levels, it shouldn't really make a difference. You're just playing it for that on-play effect. All right, let's grab our Ari and... What do you guys think? Should we go for the 6.5 or 5.5? Which one do you think is harder? How close are you to Max in the past? Uh, I actually did that last night. So when they dropped the new quests, I worked on uh, clearing those. Six point five. Already. A little bit late to our cat. Uh, let's go ahead and go for power. I mean, both of them should be a good showcase. 
So, Feral Prescience in hand, 8 Predict, not bad. Disarmed is solid. I think if we were going into the 5.5 that had all of the units, I would actually probably go for the Disarmed because they have such a massive attack, turn 2. But for this one, we really need to end very fast, and most of the damage is probably going to come from Puff Caps and less units, generally. So I think let's actually do a reroll, but Disarm can be very good. I would love to get Icker, actually. When you draw a card, give allies one power this round. Grant allies one one. So granting allies one one is okay, but again, we're trying to end very quickly because of the puff caps. So normally, we only might get the benefit of this like once so it's it's not bad but it's actually not going to be that impactful for us i don't think i think let's try to get something a little bit better uh, so overwhelm in my sights i think we'll go for the overwhelm our ari with this build is going to be pretty big so making sure she can actually get some damage in would be solid so yeah we'll grab that and let's you sorry? Sure. Alright, Dancing Droplet, Maker. We'll get rid of the Maker. We'll hold on to one Dancing Droplet. We already have Ari, and we know we're guaranteed to draw another one because she is our only champion, so we're gonna get one recall at least. Uh, let's grab that. The forest and I are one. Courage masks the heart from fear. All right, we can use our charm here for free. A whisper in the woods. Get one solid recall off. Play our Ari for a one cost. Wild hearts should run free. Then we can once again use our redoubled valor. Come on, game. Thank you. All right. It does have that slow animation speed. All right. So we can attack. It kind of doesn't matter who blocks. Luckily, with that overwhelm, we're actually going to get some solid damage in. Now, we can't attack twice. We didn't have another unit. But sure. Let's use this here. Get one last strike in. And then next round, we can drop our Ari. Won't be able to use our Sprite Dance immediately. Yeah, this will be a little bit rough for their attack. Oh, can we just recall unit? Okay. Recall to grant all stacks. Huh. I kind of thought that would take two targets. GG. <laughs> Will that damage be calculated? I don't think it does. Did you buy the Nova Crystal from the shop or did you get Nova naturally? Uh, this one I had to buy. Yeah, I don't think that cal that damage actually got calculated. We'll go for Bottle Constellation because it's like one of the most OP cards in the game. Although Lead and Follow is also pretty good. Yep, our health is still maxed out. Yep, so no damage there. Super curious about Heimer's six star. Uh, Dre in chat actually has it. He says it just pretty much gives you immediate tempo. All right, let's see. Fiora, Strike, and Capture. Reborn Grenadier, Roar, Scion. Okay, so yeah, Ziggs is looking pretty good there for the fact that we can keep playing him for free. 
yeah, we'll go for Ziggs, but honestly, we don't probably care about any of these. Uh, let's go for Champion Item. So, Soldier, once again. Yeah, the Heimerdinger one is one that I really want to test, but one that I don't necessarily want to have, if that makes sense. Like, I want to see how good it actually is, but it's like, as far as cha champions I care about getting six stars, he's not really up there too much. All right, let's get rid of the maker. Yeah, we'll stick with that. My thought exactly. What I'm the thing I kind of think with Heimerdinger is that you probably have a pool of upgrades and as you work your way down the list, like you can only get each upgrade once. This is speculation, but I'm thinking you can only get every upgrade once. And so as you're getting rid of some of the crappier upgrades, you're then increasing your odds of getting some of the better ones. So for his six star, by starting off with three upgrades, even if those are three upgrades that are worse, it's then increasing your odds of getting the better ones as you're as you're going. I'm thinking that's potentially how it works but again that is speculating i can see it significantly increasing his tempo does actually scale high damage for high difficulty just hate the formidable and sea monster one everything else is great uh let's drop our r here I go where the winds blow. Uh, yeah, we'll still go for our charm here. Oh, that is a rough looking board. We're not going to get a lot of damage past those units. Yeah, we can get a attack in, kill one of their soul shepherds Ooh. well that's rough uh we can recall our ari to try to protect her and also get some damage in so we won't have her on the board but most of their damage is now going to be gone i do love how you can save your units with a recall and they heal back up, but keep all of their buffs. So good for getting rid of status effects like stun or frostbite. <laughs> Alright, so I think once again, the exact same thing is going to happen. We're going to play a redoubled Valor. Give our Ari massive stats. They are going to attack with a very scary attack, but we'll use our Sprite Dance to recall her, which will then strike the Nexus and end the game. Catch me if you can. All right, GG. So how most of my turn one go is I drop Heimer with his six star summoned unit. I have two spell mana that I can use to play a spell, which creates at least one more unit. By the end of it, I have three to six units, each with three science buffs. That does sound, yeah, pretty, pretty crazy. Yeah, turn one Heimerdinger is so good. You got six star, yes. We did have to buy it, but we were able to get the, the six star. Uh, quicken. Normally, these effects of units with three or less power, we're not going to be able to really achieve. But I mean, the other two are too expensive, so I guess we'll go for it. Can be good for like a frostbite. Four power and can't block. I think we will actually grab this because increasing our power at all is just further compounded from our him that's also doubling our stats 
So this is actually going to give us a ton of damage. Yeah, let's go ahead and grab that. Let's go for Mist Wraith. <laughs> Mana Flow is ex uh, extremely important for Heimerdinger if you want to go for his turn one build. So, yeah, Mana Flow, very good. Uh, let's get rid of both of these. The fact that this is a zero cost is so nice. Alright, just a board full of Aries. They actually need to play something. Okay, good. Because otherwise we can't use our charm. Because yeah, I have had that be a problem before where it's like, I want to play this to recall my champion, but I cannot. I'll see all this world has to offer. Uh, we're going to be able to just end in our first turn. And we could end without attacking, too. <laughs> Which is kind of silly. We're going to buy the battle, battle pass later. It was super easy to clear and you get a lot of rewards. So, yeah, if you want to support the game, definitely worth it. The forest and I are one. So yeah, we could do another redoubled Valor here. We can push so much extra damage, but we'll just end here. GG. Conchologist, Gus Monk. I guess we'll go here. Yeah, it's fine. Uh, let's see if we can get another good power. I really want to get Icker. I think it'd be fantastic. Uh, no, I don't really want Chrono Break. Extra draw is fine. Gives us more chance to draw the cards we need to end turn one. Some okay things here, but I think we're fine. All right, what card do we want to cut? Probably Unraveled Earth. Yes, let's get rid of that. And let's go for Orin. Building a deck, are we? Excellent. I brought oh, add dropped, so we're just gonna pause for everyone here. I don't understand why the animation for him is so long in hand. Because yes, there's an animation on the champion that's played, but why is him going from six to three cost <laughs> take so long? Yeah, him is him is pretty rough. Definitely a target for animation speed increase. Uh, Aurora Phoenix. That's I think it's missing some letters in there, but I'm still gonna go with it. Uh, thank you for the follow. Yeah, and a little bit, like, uh, in the next couple months, I should start getting some more champions from the, the Nova Crystals. I've gotten a couple at, like, 7 and 8, or, like, 70 and 80. But, yeah, for the next month or so, any six stars I get, I'll probably have to buy. Oh, the things we do for content. <laughs> Good thing they're also very fun to play with. All right, everyone should be back. Uh, let's hold an Ari, and we'll get rid of the Quicken. We'll hold on to this Bright Dan Dance because it has won us a couple cards, or a couple games. Rerolling for more Aries wouldn't be bad, but oh, nice, Bottle of Constellation. Man, their hand is already completely full. Uh, and they used up all of their mana. 
So they'll still use their time and dedications, but we shouldn't really have to worry about anything from them. Alright, so we can go ahead and use our charm here. I'll see all this world has to offer. Yeah, I feel like this build is going to be one of the strongest for Ari. At least if, I mean, even if you don't have her at six star, but definitely if you do have her at six stars. Right, let's go ahead and do a, another recall. <laughs> yeah, once again, we are going to be able to end without actually attacking. So we could use our Redoubled Valor, make her even bigger. We could get an attack in with our Overwhelm, hit the Nexus twice more that way. And we also have our Recall. Huh, well. GG. And yeah, we haven't had to attack at all. All right, Ari is pretty crazy. Now I will say, we are getting enough damage to end because of the mana refill from the bottom constellation. Otherwise, it was normally taking us the second round to be able to end, but still pretty good. I think let's do a reroll. A lot of these, like this is temporary, so it shouldn't get saved by our star powers. Yeah, summoning a femoral copy actually would be bad because then when we recall an Ari, We'd still have one on the board, so it would make it more difficult. So that's actually bad. The extra spirit wouldn't be terrible because any increase to our stats makes us even more potent since we're constantly doubling that. We should always be able to draw her anyways because we have so many. But we'll, we'll go for the far side, even though it's probably going to be superfluous and not needed. Let's go for a power here. Uh, Easy Prey is great. She saves the buffs, makes her even stronger. Yeah, let's let's grab that. Yeah, I haven't seen people rec uh, recommend using uh, the Husk Succubus brand, using that on her, which is interesting. I think you could maybe go for a build with that and maybe the Blade Rack, try to make sure you can get a lot of kills. Spells Chest. Let's go for the healer, cut a card. So, the Maker. I've bought two gemstone bundles, one for PNZ when Vi and Kate came out, one for Nico. Since I really liked her 10% buff for every champion. I mean, yeah, no wonder you now don't have use for champion fragments anymore. Like, I'm now at the point where I can't really get many of the upgrades for the... <laughs> the upgrades for... Uh, champions other than the five and six stars oh god now everyone in youtube will know i'm a whale i mean before i actually pick cards most of that all gets cut so unless they read the chat which is about to go away then your secret's safe uh let's get rid of bomber trit actually let's get rid of everything but ari Husks are probably my favorite common power because they synergize with so many different things. Husks are pretty good. <laughs> Bottle Constellation again, so that's pretty much just going to be GG. I go where the wind is blow. For now. Too slow. Yeah, I think the main thing that's going to be able to shut down Ari is just when you go up against Lissandra for her cost increase. But other than that, Ari's pretty great. And you have to just push so much damage. This star power is, or this six star, is so simple, but it gives you so much damage. So we would almost be able to end here without the Bottled Constellation. But we will actually need the Bottled Constellation to actually end this round. 
Uh, we could use a homecoming, but I think we can attack this time. GG. People hunt whales for sports. <laughs> uh, that was a pretty good, pretty good response. You know, reverse card to hunt them instead. Uh, now that you just get the Ari makes a fleeting card in your hand buff, you'll have my last Lissandra runs build, Infinite Ari. Yeah, those sound pretty good. All right. Sprite Dance is pretty good with that Hero's Horn. Yeah, so far this is still ridiculously easy. So yeah, this 6 start is pretty crazy. I think let's get rid of the Maker because we're probably never going to play it. Which is always what I consider when, when I'm cutting a card. It's like, will I ever play this card? And then also, how impactful is this card? So if it's a card that I'll probably never play, but its impact is going to win me the game, then it's like, might still hold on to it. But if it's a card that's like, okay, I'm never going to play, it's not going to be that impactful, even if I do play it. That's normally what I'm thinking about when I'm cutting cards. Inner Beast. Uh, it's fine. But honestly, we just want to make our deck as consistent as possible. So adding any other cards isn't really great. Equipment or attachments, we don't have any of that. Uh, summon a Sting Officer. It gives us a unit to be able to recall. So it's fine. Let's actually leave here. Alright, Rekindler or an item chest. We could be greed here, but... I mean, we're already having enough damage to end, so it's not that big of a deal. Let's go for the item chest, so Arbiter. Hello, Grape. People are having a lot of fun with Ari. Yeah, Ari is pretty awesome. Is six star Ari worth it? I mean, so far she has absolutely dominated everything <laughs> in the game. Uh, let's get rid of this. Or actually, no, let's hold on to that. Uh, get rid of one sprite dance. We could get rid of a charm again. I think we actually will. All right, multiple Ari's is good. Will we get our Bottle of Constellation? Okay, zero cost Ari. That's not bad. I go where the winds blow. Ready to take the first step. Hmm. So it's like I could use my redoubled valor. But it kind of is pointless. I think I'd potentially want to use a charm and then just play her again. Uh, she'll refill our mana when we play her, so using more of it actually isn't a problem here. Yeah. Hush blocks Echoing Spirit 2. Yes, it apparently does. Tomorrow, the summit. So it, yeah, it kept all the buffs, actually. So even though we recalled, it still has all the buffs on her. So that's actually really good. Recalling a silence unit doesn't actually stop them. I mean, hopefully we're not silenced again when we play her, but we shouldn't be. I'll see all this world has to offer. That's really nice. All right, let's use a redouble value here. Oh, it's so cheesy. Again, we don't even 
actually need to attack. And we didn't even use our bottle of constellation. GG. Yeah, I do think Ari will actually have a little bit of an issue where you are kind of ending games potentially too fast if you actually want to play through Ari's normal playstyle. I guess you can still try to go for a build that is solely focused on your units because that one will be worse in the fact that you won't be ending games as fast. But yeah, I think Ari actually could be a champion that it'd be nice to have a toggle for the six star to turn it on or off depending on the content you're going in. Uh, we can get the Conchologist and potentially cut it up here. Uh, we're probably not going to play either of them, to be honest, so it kind of doesn't matter. All right, so Conchologist, we should have like four of. Yes. Four Sprite Dance, but we'll actually potentially play that. So yeah, let's get rid of this, have the biggest impact. And Aurelian Soul. Naturally. Alright, more Ari, the better. So yeah, so far I think the slowest is ending turn two. Alright, so we can drop our Ari. Wild hearts should run free. Too slow. All right, once again, they have Hush. That is unfortunate, but not that big of a deal. Because at least we keep a lot of those buffs. The forest and I are one. Thank you for using both of them. Oh my word. I mean, at least they're getting them out of hand. Uh. So we're going to be able to keep playing our Ari, but they're going to be able to keep hushing her. <laughs> oh, man. So yeah, we can use a redoubled Valor now, but... I mean, for one, they can just hush her again immediately. If we attack, they can actually hush the Sting Officer. So... <laughs> uh, wow. We're actually getting shut down because they have an infinite spammable hush. Uh, so yeah, we could recall again. I mean... Sure, I guess. Yeah, not ending round one. Yeah, it's not happening this time. Uh, sure, let's attack like this. Get rid of the Hail of Dragons. I'm the Forger of Stars. That's oh, that double hush. Well, that's a lot of damage. So I think I'm going to try, since we are going to refill our mana when we play our Ari, I'm going to try to use a redoubled Valor here, see if we could maybe bait them out of using their hush on this unit okay they can't play hush anymore let's drop our ari so yeah she can't block so that is a little bit of an issue we will be able to block some of their damage, though. 
So they won't have quite enough to uh, kill us, even though this will be doing a lot. Blocking their Morgana and Infinite should be fine. So yeah, I think let's actually try to buff up our Arya a bit. So yeah, not fantastic. Actually, oh, I don't even. I was like, oh, we don't have any ephemerals to block the Great Beyond. Uh, let's drop this here. All right, let's drop our Ari. So sadly, yeah, we don't have a unit, and they still have their hush, so that's not great. We could really draw in another Ari. Would be pretty nice. We have one <laughs> health left. Okay, they did use their hush right away. I was like, if they don't immediately hush, we're fine. They have another one, though, so they can just... Uh, they can just immediately do it again. Still, though, we do kind of have the mana. So I feel like we might as well try. Okay, yep, yeah, you can keep hushing her. That's that's fine. You're not changing anything. Uh. Alright, so if we try to go for another another redoubled valor, they are probably gonna immediately. Uh, cause problems. The world's heart beats with mine. Bright eyes, enchanting. Yeah, the issue is that stupid hush. So yeah, we can we we can double the stats again. I mean, they have the option. It's like, will they? Will they actually go for it? Play a Yordle. Sure, we'll... They've never seen a like this before. <laughs> Remember this moment. Okay, they, they decided not to attack. <laughs> Maybe they've reached the play X cards time limit. That's what I was thinking. <laughs> uh, I was like, maybe they just can't play it again. That was surprisingly close. I mean, yeah, literally couldn't be any closer. All right, six star Ari is incredibly powerful. And up until Aurelian Soul, we were able to absolutely dominate, completing every single uh, battle in, like, round two. So, six-star Ari is very strong, and I feel like this is going to be one of the strongest builds for her. Especially if you just want to focus on your Ari and not really focus on your whole board or units. This is going to be exceptionally good, and compared to some of the other six-stars, she's actually going to be... Up there she is incredibly consistent especially with a build like this you don't need really anything to get this going you have so much power baseline any upgrades you get are great but it's not like you need to get any power throughout the adventure because you're already just putting out so much damage yeah she's definitely definitely up there with the other constellations like misfortune or uh viego and swain for just putting on so much pressure 
right at the start of the game. Would you try a simple build on her as well, i.e. one that works with her entire deck? Uh, we did that last time. We did one that was trying to focus on her, her units and not just playing her. And yeah, it worked out decently well. I think we can try... Let's maybe go for a uh, scissors build and see how that see how that does now again scissors is going to have the positive and negative that the unit you're recalling since the femoral gets the strike off is going to die so it's not going into your hand so often with Ari, you're comboing your units together where you're recalling them and then playing them again for free not really going to be happening because you're going to be sacrificing a lot of your units with this but it is just giving you more flat out damage and then you don't have your units crowding up your hand so it definitely is a positive and a negative, but it does make you more aggressive in the early game. Yeah, I think we'll probably stick with the Fear Cleaving Axe because it is really good. I think we'll stay away from Essence Theft. While it isn't bad, we can try one without her Epic Relic. Do we want to go for Cease and Desist again? I do feel like actually going for Black Shield wouldn't be bad to really just protect your units, and then every time you play them again, they are still safe. So I do think Black Shield could be solid for Ari. Black Shield, you're thinking the same thing. Uh, Cease and Desist, it is really good, but we did try it earlier. I think we'll try Black Shield just to change things up a bit. Yeah, again, for anyone who wasn't here earlier, we have the pretty much full constellation done with all of the, the bonus nodes, other than all the gemstones. So yeah, here are all the different all the different powers. Hmm. I don't know if I want to do the 5.5. Uh, sure. I guess we'll go for it. This build isn't going to stand up nearly as well as our last one. Our last one would have been fine for tackling it. This one, don't really know, but sure. Let's go for it. Harpoon might be okay. You mean like the, the pike relic? The power in challenger is not, not bad. Allies have Overwhelm. It is nice. Raiding Party will be better because we will be doing a lot more Nexus damage. Although, to be honest, I say Overwhelm could be good. The enemy is often going to have such massive blockers that we might not be getting that much damage in. A lot of our damage is probably going to be either from Elusives or the Nexus Strike. Yeah, Overwhelm actually might not give us too much damage. They have Poros summoned every round. They're constantly getting buffed up. I think we'll actually reroll. Try to get something a bit better. Uh, so Hallowed. That wouldn't be bad because we are going to have a lot more units dying. And this would buff up our Ari. She'd be able to kind of, kind of get a double benefit from it because she can strike and then strike again. Potentially striking like six times. But while this wouldn't be bad... This would be a very much scaling power, and we really need something for the early game because this is going to be rough. Prey is really nice, and Feebling Strike is solid. I think we'll go for the Prey. It's just so good with Ari. Ah, uh, Spey. You play 6-star Ari with Swain and recall him. Does his 3 damage, and if he levels his board clear, animate. I mean, yeah, Swain should be able to get his Nexus Strikes off for 6-star. Uh, let's get rid of the Maker. I think we'll hold on to the rest. Yeah, I think the build we're going with is going to get kind of countered by this modifier, so we might actually get shut down here. 
I don't have the highest of hopes, fortunately. Wild hearts should run free. Just follow the yellow light. All right, so here this is going to be good and bad because we're going to recall this, but then it's going to die, so we're not going to be able to play it again. So we're going to run out of units to play. <laughs> But that is a solid amount of damage. All right, we'll be able to play a charm, recall our Ari, and actually end. GG. That is one thing you'll be able to take advantage of the AI because, yeah, quite often they're not going to always make the best trades possible because they're trying to keep some of their units alive like they did right there. So they gave us a ton of damage, but they're like, oh, they're not going to be able to end based on that damage. But with those Nexus Strikes, it does a lot. I think let's go for Gruesome Theater. It is going to be difficult to play, but it is a one cost. We get it in our opening hand. I like it better than these. Done this with my five star Ari. Aurelia left me with one HP. Almost cried if it blade. If I died to a blade dance. Yeah, it happened to me before. All right, so free attack, scout. So that means this would give us a rally. Not bad. We have Leona, Senna. So this would be a one cost drain two. Which isn't bad. But this is normally not going to kill units. It would give us some sustain, but I kind of feel like normally we're not going to play it. The problem is nothing. none of this is really helping our early game. It's so like this right here is solid. Being able to have scout barrier and quick strike and we could recall this and play it more we could reroll here and try to find more early game units but i think we'll stick with this all right chamber solitary monk we have black shield uh looks like add drops will pause and uh hold off don't know if it was mentioned here, but I finally finished all of my Lissandra's. Nice. Congrats. Oh, so yeah, if you need to... Well, most people to hear this would be in the ad. But if you need to go to the bathroom, get a drink, go ahead and do that now. Get a nice... Get a nice stretch in. All right, so we could cut a card. Cutting the Grizzled Ranger wouldn't be terrible. Could go for a item. I am a little bit worried about the Chempunk Shredder. I think this can still potentially, like, crash your games. So I might avoid it purely for that. All right, everyone should be back. I think we're going to avoid the Kempunk Shredder. I think this one can crash your game, which we don't really want to have it happen again. Uh, so I think we'll go over here for the Jagged Butcher. All right, Droplet, Pathless. Let's get rid of Grizzled and also Pathless.
Yeah, the husks is so good for Ari. Drop our Dancing Droplet. So we'll be attacking with triple elusives. And that'll be getting a, a lot of damage down. Alright, so once again, we can recall our Ari and actually have enough to end before they can get their first attack in. Now, we could also drop our Warden to get a Rally here, but I mean, this is going to be a lot better. GG. I think I like this build better than the previous one. Yeah, the previous one, it's like your games are going to get a lot more repetitive because you're always doing the exact same thing so i think it's going to be one of those that's very good for consistency but can be a little bit more boring especially since you can end without even attacking so you're having some of these other ones where you're still kind of trying to focus on your deck and your units could be pretty good i'll go for children yeah solid gives us units gives us a recall yeah that's fine Right, let's go for the item chest. Draw one is decent. Mana cost on this, because like this is actually going to be pretty hard to play sometimes. I think let's go for the sprite dance. But dancing droplet would also be pretty good here. Uh, with the four attacks, they summon exact if I'm going to copy the weakest unit. Tactician, shop. Let's go for the shop and try to get a power. Now, we do have our spell shield, so that is going to reduce down Lord Broadmain. Sure, let's try to go here. If we didn't have the spell shield, I think I would have tried to avoid it. But since we have black shield, we'll hopefully be fine. It's always funny when you say we'll go for ch children. <laughs> you think about it out of context? Yeah. All right, let's get rid of all of these. Again, holding on to Quinn to increase our odds of drawing Ari. It is really nice that we actually start with the attack token now. Because <laughs> then being able to attack first thing would be pretty rough. And yeah, Scissors is definitely pretty scary here. It's giving us a lot of damage round one. But... If they are able to attack, we have nothing other than our Ari. Alright, so right here, they'll be able to block this. But getting rid of some of their units early isn't the worst. Because at least then they're not scaling up. So not great, but yeah, we're not going to be able to, to end. Alright, so there goes our spell shield. So we could avoid it with our sprite dance, but I think we'll actually let this go through and then potentially drop a, a charm to recall our Ari, because her being stunned is not a big deal. All right, so we can then drop her here. And then let's try to reduce down the damage we're taking, as well as work on finishing the moth. So we'll drop a sprite dance next round, and that'll be game. All right, that's fine. Yeah, that's that's okay. Too slow. GG. All right, so still clearing pretty consistently. Still having enough damage even without going for some of that cheesier builds. 
yeah, scissors is definitely kind of high risk, high reward. Uh, to flamey recall an ally, start a free attack challenging an enemy. I think we'll actually go for the conspirator. All right, I would really like to get Icker. Ah, sad. Still good though. We could try to dump a bunch of rerolls to get something stronger. I mean, just drawing two at the start of the game is pretty nice though. But we are about to hit up Aurelia, which is <laughs> rough. Yeah, I think we'll try to get something a little bit stronger. Uh, summon a two cost unit from your deck. So that's going to hit Ari, Mr. Root, or the Blade Scout. So Ari or Mr. Root would both be good. Uh, Conspirator is a play effect, but it's still another elusive unit. So having another unit on the board for some more damage, I think that's fine. Yeah, I think let's not bother with anything else. We have 31 health. So we could cut a card, could try to heal up a little bit. Aurelia does put down a ton of damage. I think let's get rid of, rid of the Grizzled Ranger, though. Let's go for Aurelia. For the first lands. Am I the only one who felt a bit sad that they didn't put any skins or cosmetics in the Battle Pass? Uh, it can be not much, mostly focused on in-game currencies, but still. Uh, you're not the only one. I wouldn't have minded if they had a skin or two in there. Yeah, there's, there's some rewards in there that, like, instead of 500 Stardust, getting a skin, uh, or maybe even like 10 Wild Fragments a skin. It, I wouldn't have been, I wouldn't have been opposed. Uh, let's give it a Pathless. I think we can hold on to the rest. Yeah, one few skins for the whole battle pass. Yeah, that wouldn't have that wouldn't have been bad. Nice. So our well, one we got our Mr. Root, which is good, and then our Ari is going to be able to get elusive. Uh, this a hundred times. I hate Aurelia so much. Sure, let's on. drop this here. Let's go ahead and attack like this. Get some solid damage down. So we could use Sprite Dance. I think let's actually use her charm. A whisper in the wood. Because we're gonna try to play her next round and then use a Sprite Dance to end. So we just need them to develop and not open attack. Wow. Run Alright, we're fine. But that was very, very close. But we didn't need the heal, not even close. Oh man. I think they're probably not gonna be creating any skins anytime soon, so maybe it doesn't make sense to set a precedent for skins in the battle pass when new exclusive champs will not be getting skins. At least that's my assumption. You're definitely right about them not creating more skins, but I think they have a big enough backlog of skins that putting one or two, like even just putting like one skin per battle pass, they'd have a long time before they run out of skins. So it wouldn't be terrible.
Uh, we'll go for Farsight just to make sure we get our Ari. All right, we were able to clear Aurelia. That's potentially the toughest fight this time. When an ally dies, grants its power to a unit in hand. Still have Crush, which could be okay. Reunited is solid. Inheritance is really good. The one issue is that we need to end these games fast. And Inheritance... Oh, excuse me. Inheritance is something that is better the longer the game goes on. So I think we won't really be able to utilize it. We could go more for the uh, crush. We have been having situations where their units aren't that big. So in our first couple rounds, we are losing some damage when we get blocked. So yeah, we could go for more rerolls. I think we will go for the crush, though. Uh, it's a me. Thank you for the, the follow. Appreciate the support. Uh, slot bot, healer. I think we'll go for the, the healer to try to cut a card. So yeah, let's go for Hearthguard. Or Hearthguard. There are some skins for Arianheimer, though I love the previous battle pass for LOR because it was a way of getting skins with big value in general. General. Yeah, I understand that I'm talking about the expectation it sets and how it's going to have four brand new champions this year alone that might not have a skin to give away. People will complain about not getting any skins for the new shiny <laughs> for the new shiny thing. I think if they had the precedent that the battle pass would have a skin and not necessarily that it would be for one of the new champions, but I do get that. They want the battle pass to be focused on the new content. So giving away an older skin. They're probably like that doesn't really make sense for them. Is four star Pike good enough? New player, by the way. Uh, yeah, four star Pike is really nice to be able to increase your consistency. It's one of the ones you probably want to try to get if you can. It is pretty, pretty good. Uh, let's get rid of the maker. Even though we would draw an Ari, having two means we have a really nice recall. Yeah, I think we'll actually hold on to it. I, hope you're excited to die too. I think it would be fun if they made some battle passes that maybe weren't necessarily themed on the current content. Or they made like, I'm thinking for Halloween, if they made like a Halloween themed battle pass where they had maybe some of the like the coven skins in there. Or like, like one of them and then the champions they released alongside it was also just like all about spookiness. I think things like that could be good. Speaking of that, actually. Imagine if they meet released Fiddlesticks in October. Because people are saying Fiddlesticks was like rumored with some of the stuff for Lux Illuminated or teased. If they released Fiddlesticks in October, that would be that would be awesome. <laughs> yeah, thematic. That'd be great. Uh, let's drop our Ari. I'll see all this world has to offer. The spell shield is very nice. Especially the fact that we can trigger it multiple times. Uh, they normally don't play that unless they have the other one. So while we could play a second unit, I think let's just attack and get as much damage as possible. It is nice here that they kind of can't block because we do actually have that overwhelm. I think let's go for children so we can go for... Uh, the poor snacks. This is fast, so we could use it in response to what the enemy does, though. Yeah, so I think we'll hold it off. We're recalling our Ari here. So that way we can play our Pathless for free. 
and then we'll drop Ari next round. Can see the Nebastian border from here. Ari, what do you fight against? Bet you want me to say my name. All right, so here. We can use both of our recalls, have both of them strike the Nexus, and this should be game. <laughs> GG. Yeah, for sure. Definitely not opposed to it. Love cosmetics in this game. Also feel they could give us something else like pets, boards, cards back. They have a lot of cosmetics no one is buying. At least they could entice people to buy the battle, battle pass without pigeonholing themselves into creating new skins for champs. Yeah, I definitely, definitely need the core of the battle pass to still be just progression for Path of Champions. But even if there was like one thing every month, like, okay, this month in the battle pass, there's a skin. Next month, there is a card back. Next month, there's a pet. So it's not like that's what the whole battle pass is, but it's still like one little different cosmetic you can um, have fun with for people that like it, but still the vast majority of everything in the battle pass being um, focused on resources. I think that would be a good balance. If you start adding multiple, like two to three of the cosmetics, then I think a lot of people would probably get annoyed by that because I think a large amount of the player base just wants resources. But yeah, one, maybe two at most for a cosmetic would be okay. Uh, by the way, does anyone know if Found Fortune is the best slot on any champion? Found Fortune is very good for a lot of the expensive champions. So it's really good for Volley Bear because normally what you pull out is another giant Titanic unit. So then you can just have a huge tempo play of dropping Volley Bear and then a massive other Titanic unit as well. Uh, very good for Elder Dragon because again, you can drop a giant dragon with you as well. Uh, so it's really good for them. And then it's good for specific use cases where you really want to buff up a specific unit. So like for Elise, her Spiderling is what's normally going to get hit with it. So as long as you don't get any of one cost, you can grant your Spiderlings epic items. So that's very good. Uh, yeah, very good for Leona because Leona pulls out Ravoon, which is another use case of just like a very specific card you want to buff, buff up or draw. Uh, yeah, very good for Janna because just getting another zero cost card. So it's it is very good on a solid amount of champions. Uh, here, we don't really want, like, we don't want more copies of a champion that's not our Ari. Crown Guard is hilarious to be able to constantly get a rally going, but we're never going to get the eight mana, so this is kind of pointless. So I guess we'll just, by the process of elimination, go for the Hunter. We might just cut it here. Uh, let's see. Okay, so yeah, we have two costs of pretty much everything other than our sprite dance, which we don't want to cut. So yeah, let's just get rid of the, the hunter. All right, shop. Let's see. A lot of stuff I do not want to get. Hey, look, deep cuts. Finally, this should be a lot of fun. Let's go for the champion item. So Yeti Yearling. Cut two cost. No, because we actually... We don't want Ari to be the thing summoned. So, actually, we don't want to get rid of her. We like the fact that we're summoning other units with our uh, two costs. Because we want Ari to be able to play and get the, the husks. So, we, we like our two costs and we like them being summoned. I think we'll hold on to this. We like having a fast speed recall. We like having another cheaper recall. Cheap unit to potentially play. All right, so we did get our Ari, which is fine, but we generally like these buffs hitting her if possible. Uh, so yeah, we can drop our sparring student. It'll get buffed up a good amount. 
we could recall and replay our Ari to get those buffs, which honestly wouldn't be the worst idea. Sure. So we got to play her for free, got a strike off, can drop her again. I'll see all this world has to offer. Let's go for sparring students. We can have another unit attack with us. And sure. All right, so let's do a solid amount of damage. We'll stack up the Icker a bunch of times. All right, solid. This is already a 12, so there's no way they can get rid of it. Warm hearts and hot soups. All right, here we'll go for our charm because it is focus speed. So they can't do anything to stop it. Drop our Ari again. And now we can drop a, another one. And that's game. GG. The summon two cost can summon Ari. Yes, it's not just followers, it's just a two cost unit, so it can summon your champion for free. So it is a one cost fast recall. So that's pretty good. Yeah, let's let's grab that. What do you think of big guns? It's just a little cooler Ludens, but it can't stack. Yeah, that's pretty much the best way to describe it. It's a better form of Ludens unless you can have a champion that can stack it up. That's the one case where you want Ludens. And zero cost puts them on board. Yes, but it's more the fact that it's a fast speed recall that's cheap. That's kind of the, the big part for us. The, the putting on board is nice, but even if it didn't have that, we're still going to grab it. Okay, we'll go for mana deposit. That is nice. Let's go for healer. I don't think we have too many copies of anything big. Could get rid of the gruesome theater. But into Lissandra, she might frostbite us, so it might actually be playable. I think I'll get rid of the maker. Yeah, I think I'll get rid of this one. All right, Lissandra. At last, my time is at hand. Oh. All right, let's get rid of this conspirator. Get rid of gruesome theater. I think we'll hold on to the charm. solid uh, i haven't seen a person who got big guns from a reliquary and was happy yeah i agree big guns is solid but it's definitely not something i want from a reliquary which is why i got it from the the emporium which i think is actually one thing they do they put like they put something in the emporium that you just want to make sure you don't get near golden reliquary <laughs> I got Living Weapon and was really sad about that. Actually disliked that one more than Big Guns. Wow. I think Living Weapon will be fun. I look forward to playing it. That's the only one I don't have, and I'm actually sad about it. Uh, let's drop our R here. I go where the wind flow. <laughs> King of Trolls coming through. All right, I think let's actually play some of these to try to keep buffing her up so our attack can be a bit stronger especially since we can keep playing her for free I'll see all this world has to offer. we 
We do have a retreat. We have our children of the forest, so... I think we could actually play this here. Just so we can try to fill out our board a little bit more. So we'll drop our R because again, we can play her for free. Fleeting return. Could drop another Mr. Root. Sure, let's drop this here. All right, so we can attack like this, get a ton of damage down. They can't really block anything. And I think the Icker is just going to end up killing them. <laughs> Mr. Root is adorable. All right, GG. What is her six star? Every time you recall a unit, you get... Uh, um, your unit hits the enemy nexus. They strike it. Mystery is the absolute best. All right, still wait, still able to come away with the win there. I am actually pretty surprised. I thought that this type of build into this adventure would be rough because this is kind of the hardest adventure this week with their crazy scaling and free units, but still able to consistently end very quickly. And while we got some nice upgrades, it wasn't like it was anything insane. Not like we got any legendary powers or anything like that. Yeah, I think Ari is still very versatile. And yeah, still feels like a fantastic champion. Yeah, Living Weapon on Vayne is going to be a little bit of a questionable choice. Just because it's buffing your equipment, but with Vayne you're often swapping equipment. So we'll have to see how it actually how it actually works with her. I'm not sure if I want to replace my Death's Foil with it. How do you think Ari is ranking next to busted champions like Diego and Swain? She is surprisingly up there, so... Ah, damn it. <laughs> Add drops, we're gonna wait. Oh, man. I was just about to set up for a nice big rant. Oh, well. Usually OTK with Vayne anyways, so the stats on the first turn are the same. So that goes against its case, but then next turn, if I tumble again, I want the axe. Yeah, Vayne is going to be an interesting one with the living weapon. Oh, about 30 seconds, 30 seconds left. Living Weapon is Dark and Expired. I think it works well with both Dark and Champs. Yeah, I think it should be pretty solid. Let's actually, the only relic I don't have, or at least epic one, Play, attack, and round start forge me. So yeah, this is going to get some pretty good scaling. It'll be a little bit sad for both of the Darkin champions just because they are more expensive, so it's going to take you a while. Oh, right, Varus. Everyone forgets about Varus. Same. All right, so I'll answer now your uh, question, Tora. So... You asked, how do you think Ari is ranking next to the busted champions like Diego and Swain? She's definitely up there, but she does have kind of one drawback. So Ari is very good. You're able to put on a ton of pressure very early. And 
end most matches incredibly quickly. And with one of her builds, she does actually have really good scaling for Ari to be very big. Now, I'm still kind of leaning towards Viego being a little bit stronger just because with his six star, you're getting even more scaling for all of your units, not just like your Viego. But then also for Viego, he's able to steal enemy units and he can just also control the board and have pretty insane scaling. So he not only can end like turn one and two, but also just kind of has unparalleled scaling. Now, Ari with her him build, where you're constantly redoubling her, can also scale really well as well. Now, you do have the one issue that all of your stacks are on your Ari. So when we hit an issue like we just did with Aurelian Soul, where he's silencing our champion and we're now kind of useless in that scenario, Whereas with like Viego, we still have all of our units being absolutely busted. So I think Ari right now can put on a little bit more pressure more consistently than Viego in like turn one, even though we've had plenty of times where Viego ends turn one, but right out the gate, no extra bonuses or help. Ari is probably slightly more consistent with early game damage, not Viego is not very far behind, but as far as scaling, especially scaling for all of your units, Viego kind of has that a little bit more than Ari. For both of them, though, they are incredibly good. And in these weekly nightmares, like Ari was able to end almost every single match in like the first two rounds. So it is pretty insane. She is definitely up there with the best the amount of damage like because most of the way i'm comparing these six star champions is how much damage are they putting out at the very start of the game and how consistently are they doing that because it kind of doesn't matter what the enemy does if you can just end in the first round so ari very good at that viego very good at that misfortune very good at that jinx very good at that swain pretty good at that swain is a little bit more behind the others swain is a bit more niche in the fact that he is has the best round one board clear out of just about anyone and then normally from there you're in such a good position that you can end still pretty quickly but compared to the others he's normally ending one to two turns later than the other champions so he is a little bit slower still incredibly good but a bit slower uh, as far as Kaisa, she is very strong, but again, is normally ending a little bit slower than the others. Still, though, is pretty, pretty solid. Some of the ones like Pike, very good in the mid game, but he is definitely a little bit on the weaker side. If you're just comparing like raw turn one and turn two damage, he's definitely a little bit slower, kind of closer to Swain, but even then maybe a little bit behind. Uh, Caitlyn is still solid. I think she's a fun six star, but I would say compared to most of the champions I've played, she is a little bit behind the pack as well. I have two Ionia crystals, might use it on Ari. I mean, she is pretty crazy strong. I think Ionia is between Ari and Lilia. Yasuo gives me more CC, but you really need that. I guess if you want him to be the CC King, you can. Yeah, Yasuo is very good, but especially compared to the other champions as far as like turn one damage, he doesn't really have that. Like he's exceptionally good, but he kind of has the same situation as Morgana, where you are very, very likely to win any adventure you put him in. It's just going to take a little bit longer than many of the other champions. But as far as consistency, Yasuo is definitely up there. The three best six stars, Swain, Misfortune, Viego. I don't see anyone else up there in this tier. I mean, I would say Ari is definitely up there. Ari can consistently end definitely faster than Swain. If you're just talking about how fast a champion can end. Like, Swain doesn't have... He does have other good strengths, like the fact that he has really good control, excellent removal. 
it just takes him a little bit longer to actually finish the game. But he's still so strong. Ari, though, is just ridiculous damage. I like that six star Swain Misfortune. You don't even need to draw them. I mean, yes and no. I feel like for both of them, you still really want to draw them. <laughs> they're, they're both really good cards you want to be playing. So like for Swain, I normally use his turn one build and you need to have Swain on the board for that. Like technically, yeah, if you don't draw them, you can still be fine, but still really like to have them i'd say misfortune is the only top tier at is only top tier at six star if you have her epic misfortune is still pretty good with echoing spirit so using that as a alternative she still is very strong she still puts a lot of damage i took her through one of the weekly nightmares with that build and still i think ended every single match in turn one uh, so, without her Epic Relic, she is still solid. But I would definitely say that, yes, Misfortune is even better with her Epic Relic, and it also makes her a lot more consistent. One issue with Misfortune is you could end up not drawing your champion spells with, like, the Echoing Spirit build. Now, again, I still was able to clear the entire adventure turn one, I think, every time. So the consistency isn't bad but it is definitely worse than with shock and on so yeah it's still fine without it still have to watch that video of misfortune against nightmares yeah worked pretty well uh swain is the king of the nightmares in my opinion specifically ones where enemy floods the board turn one yeah and that's the thing for for swain even if he's not ending turn one he's still so strong at dealing with enemies flooding the board that even if other people might end games consistently faster than him, he is so good at controlling the board and just dominating the enemy. He is a very good niche for just clearing the board turn one, and then anytime the enemy plays a unit, you just immediately kill it. So yeah, Swain is exceptionally good. So if you didn't want to evaluate champions on just how fast they ended, then yeah, Swain is definitely so strong and a great addition to anyone's roster. Maybe Ash should be in the conversation. The one issue, well, the main issue with Ash is that I don't have her at six stars, so I haven't been able to play with it. Now, I get the concept of using Ash with double gatebreakers, because especially when you have her at five stars, that means you can drop Ash turn two. But you can just have her sit in hand and then have her nuke the enemy board as soon as she gets enough power. Um, I think other champions will still be able to end faster than her because I think this is still going to take a couple rounds for Ash to get enough power to end. Especially in like when you're going to get up against the units that have like 99 Nexus health. But again, this is unfortunately speculation because I don't have her six star yet. So yeah, take that all with a grain of salt. I think Ash is definitely going to be very strong, strong with her six star. I think the triple gate breaker build is hilarious and probably exceptional. But I do think it's going to take a couple rounds of controlling the board before you can actually end with Ash. Only encounter where six star Swain struggles was the turn one at Nivea where the dude gave tough the enemy board and Nexus. Yeah, that's really the only time I've like lost with Swain is that one encounter where for one, I think Swain was still bugged when I was doing that. So we weren't getting our damage increase that we should have been. But then, yeah, that unit getting everyone tough. That was pretty terrible. <laughs> but other than that, uh, Swain's destroyed everything. Hey, mortal. Yeah, I think Ash is going to be very good because even though you are having games go a little bit longer, you're not going to struggle to control the board with all of your, your Frostbites. Uh, but yeah, she's probably going to be a little bit slower than many of the other champions just because you have... One, you have to Frostbite the enemy, and the power you're getting is based on what they have. But then... 
also you have to have you have to have this hit your ash which this says randomly distribute that much power among allies and hands so i feel like it gets spread out among all of your units or at least randomly among them so that's good because it's more likely to then have at least some of the power hit your ash but you're still going to be trying to get rid of your units as much as possible so that only ash is in hand but you could accidentally have too many units ash just doesn't get hit with this and it take a couple extra rounds yeah ash should be should be pretty good yeah that is the great thing is that it scales with content is yeah the higher the enemy power is the stronger you get which is pretty fun I don't like how it's in hand. I feel like it should be units on your board. Units on your board would be fine, but this is nice because then it gives you massive value for like Stalker's Blade, uh, Gatebreaker, and then also Trifarian. Like I imagine if you get Trifarian on your Ash, you just win. <laughs> like you can just consistently have every single one of your units be removing an enemy unit and it's just probably insane. Watch a major six-star Ash and Jory not draw Ash four times. We cry together. Oh, that is pretty funny. Yeah, as far as champion six-stars that I, like... Actually, probably better champion six-stars that I don't want. Uh, for one, Nora. I'm not really interested in Nora's six-star. It going to champions... I would really love to be able to have a switch to turn this on and off because I think it'd be fun to play with, but I don't necessarily want to deal with champions. I like the fact that it's followers. So yeah, the Nora one, not really interested in. Uh, Echo. I mean, yeah, you're dropping massive units, which can be fun, but I don't know. I'm just not as interested in this one personally. I think it's probably good, but I just don't care as much. Uh, is there anyone else that I just kind of don't care about? Kind of Yasuo. I think his six star is also going to be good, but I don't think it's really going to change how you're playing much. I think Yasuo is already so strong that it's not really needed. I do actually want to play with the Morgana one. Yeah, most champions I do want to be able to to play with and test out, but there's a couple I just kind of don't care. Sonny says he regrets Six Star Echo a little. Oh, <laughs> uh, that's perfect. <laughs> that's funny. For me, Aatrox and Morgana are also not interesting. I regret getting Six Star Nico over Aatrox. That's good to know. Yeah, that actually is anyone having six star regrets post in chat uh, for me for the six stars. Is there anyone I actually regret getting? No, I think I'm pretty happy with everyone. Yeah, I don't think there's any that I regret at the moment. Nico is just so boring, extremely so. Yeah, I can see that. Yeah, let's, we'll pull up the Nico 6 star just for anyone who doesn't know. When Az attack, deal 1 to all enemies and the enemy nexus. Increase by 1 for each attacking subtype. So you're getting a lot of extra damage, which is fun. But yeah, playing Nico, she can be actually a pretty boring champion to play. So far, I'm happy with all I have. Misfortune, Vayne, Jace, and Ari. I feel like 6-star Jace is probably crazy. Uh, best six star Vandal Vex. Um, it's hard to say best. I would go for Vex because I like Vex the best. Uh, but I think six star Yumi. Yumi is considered Vandal, right? Not Targon. Yeah, she's considered Vandal. Uh, so six star Yumi, I think. I keep hearing the wrong, wrong thing. I think this is actually pretty strong. Round start, grow all allies to the strongest ally stats this round. 
I think this is going to be very good and very strong. Probably, if I'm trying not to be biased, this is probably stronger than six star Vex. Now, I like playing Vex more than Yumi, so that's why I would want to go for Vex. This is probably stronger than that. And then, probably not Nora, even though Nora is... It's funny, I think all the ones that, like, Sunny... All the ones that he six-starred are all the ones I'm not interested in at all. Uh, I think six-star Heimerdinger is still going to be solid. So attack allies in hand and play. Start the game with three random improved upgrades. Pretty much from your constellation, all of your units are going to be tech. And so you start the board with a lot of extra power and you get a unit on the board. Since this is summoned, you also get one uh, spell mana refill as well. I think six-star Heimerdinger is probably quite strong, especially if you go for a turn one Heimerdinger build. And again, if I'm being realistic, I think six star Heimerdinger is probably stronger than six star Vex. Again, I would prefer Vex over Heimerdinger, but Heimerdinger is probably better. Again, though, all of this is speculation because I don't have any of the Bandle six stars. So. Who knows? Vex, so Vex actually might be, other than Nora, maybe on the weaker side, even though I still think she's really good. How's your experience with Six Star Kate? Uh, I like Six Star Kate. She is definitely weaker than I was expecting. I thought she was going to be a bit more consistent, especially since pretty much all Flash Bomb traps have the effect of in the top eight cards of the enemy deck. And you just have so many ways to plant flash bomb traps. I thought the consistency was going to be a lot better. Not really the case, though, as far as the, the traps themselves. So I still think she is a lot of fun. I like the removal you get with the perfect aim. I think it's a nice way to kind of change up how you normally play in your Caitlyn. It's just adding another element. So it's not like you're cha really changing how you play, but you just have a little bit more depth to it. But she is definitely weaker than I was expecting. And while she's still very strong, she's probably one of the weakest six stars. So yeah, I don't mind her. I know a lot of other people aren't the, the biggest fan, though. Sunny six starred Nora, too, I think. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, he's six starred Nora, which I was like, I don't I don't want to six star Nora at all. And then he also six starred um, Echo. All oh, right, I have Echo at five stars, so he's higher. And yeah, Echo is also another one that's like, doesn't sound as fun to me or as interesting. I like six star Jinx. Six star Jinx, I like just the massive amount of damage. It makes Jinx feel a lot closer to like Swain. I like, I like the removal damage focus champions. So like Vex, Swain, and Jinx, I enjoy playing all of them. I like how six star Viego does Viego just better without uh, playstyle change. The Manway does better with all that power. Yeah, just pretty fun. With six star Nora, does it still do off their cost? Can't get any chant from it. I think it's still based on uh, their cost. So when she first starts out, your portals are still pulling out champions that cost like one, two, or three. And then. Now your Mysterious Portal summon four, five, or six uh, cost champions instead of the followers. So yeah, still the still the cost based. Personally, I see no appeal for a six star Jinx. Jinx in general is not fun for me. Jinx is definitely on the simpler side because she's the first champion you get and she's made to be easy. But pretty similar to Swain, I just like dropping Jinx and immediately nuking the board with double super mega death rockets so yeah i think it's it's fun but she is pretty simple and yeah i definitely understand people not really being as interested in her because she is kind of a more simple less interesting version of swain and vex yeah 10 damage power powers are pretty good Darius is also so boring in my eyes. I don't know. I think... I think Darius could be fun. 
When allies attack, summon a random Noxian ally with cost equal to your mana gems. For one, I like the fact that this is tied to your mana gems, so it gives you a little bit more depth and complexity, and ramping up your mana has more of an impact for your Darius. I think it's very fun and thematic, the fact you're bringing out these Noxian units. I could see Darius probably being on the weaker side, though, compared to many other champions. Now, it is nice with your two-star, because, like, if you attack, you summon a unit, and you got your rally in, then you can then attack with even more units in the same round. So I think it's fun, but I definitely could see him being, yeah, weaker than many others. Darius is stack deck champ now. Uh, yeah, it does work out pretty well. I've seen Darius 6 star in action. It literally did nothing in the entire adventure. Really? That's sad. That Yeah, that's sad. Yeah, the Legion Grenadier having Ancient Coin is super strong because the Legion Grenadier also has, if you look at his starting deck, it has the Spirit Stone. So if this gets one extra cost reduction, or if you get like created cards cost one less, you now have an infinite unit, which is pretty crazy. Darius feels a little bit like a win more champ. If it's fine, it's fine if fine. If it's weak, it's weak. Yeah, I could I could see that. Which is sad, because I do like Darius. I don't know if I've seen anything like it yet, but it would be interesting to see a five-star tier list, considering my duck feats are limited. Um, I could actually do that. I have most champions at five stars. And like the couple that I don't have. Yeah, I think I'm fine with doing a, a constellate or a tier list if I have at least most of the champions at like the certain ranking. So we could actually try to do like a four star tier list, a five star tier list, and then hopefully eventually a six star tier list. So Jinx is the best PNZ six star. Um, I don't think I'd go that far. Let's see. So I really like Jace, even like I don't have it, but I think his would be really good. Vi one is also probably very strong. So the Jinx six star is very good. Your spells and skills deal double damage. It does let you end games often in the first round or in the first couple rounds. So she is definitely strong, but a lot of people can find her boring. Uh, what's the Vi one again? When you play a card, grant allies and hand one power. Hey, service. I don't have my experience with others, but six star Jace is really nutty. Yeah, I think. You can pull the community for feedback on six stars, I'm sure. So you can make an informed tier list. I mean, possibly. <laughs> but it's. I don't know. Some people's opinions on. Certain champions aren't the best. I don't know. I have to... I do like discussing it with chat because I get to see, like, why people have the certain feedback they do. Um, but I think... So 6-star Jace, I think, is actually really good. After you play a 6-cost spell, deal 10 to a random enemy or the enemy nexus if there's none. This is actually doing a lot of damage because while I don't have the 6-star, I can play Jace, and every time I play a 6-cost spell, I can just imagine 10 damage going off. And you're dropping a lot of six costs. You can consistently get one round two. And then often right in the mid game, you're dropping two to three a round. So getting just an extra 20 or 30 damage every single round after like the first couple rounds is a ton. So 
I think 6R Jace would actually be very, very good. It's one that I really want to uh, test and play with. I think in general, 4P and Z, they're all solid. I will say Caitlyn is on the weaker side. She's probably the weakest out of P and Z. Still good, and I think a lot of fun. But yeah, a bit weaker. I think the Echo one is good because you can just get crazy amount of stats with this in my opinion it's a little bit boring so for me i'm not really interested and i think a lot of people feel the exact same way about jinx where it's good but it's also it can be boring it's so like if you like removal a lot you might want to lean towards jinx if you really like having giant units you might want to go towards echo and then if you want to have more of a interesting play style, you might want to go for Caitlyn and you might want to go for Jace. I think Jace is probably, I would say almost definitely stronger than Caitlyn, but I think both of them are more of like the interesting pick in my opinion. Yeah, Echo isn't boring to me, doubling with Predict is so fun. Yeah, that's the thing. Some people are really gonna like that. And so Echo's for them. Other people really like just big removal. And so they didn't go for Echo. I haven't run Jace in Nightmares um, yet, but now I want to just to prove this person wrong about the Jace slander. Yeah, some people really don't like Jace, but I think Jace is really solid. Yeah, I'm that person that would use a P and Z Nova Crystal on Jinx or Echo, the boring champs. Yeah, that's the thing. It's it is very subjective of who you want to get and. I think there's not really a wrong reason or a wrong choice for your six star. Like, you can pick a champion that's bad for you, that so you can definitely make the wrong choice that way. But I think there is a reason to pick every single champion. There's a few wrong choices based on what you're personally going for. So if you're just trying to pick like the strongest champion possible, and then you end up picking like Caitlyn, like, okay, yeah, then you made a wrong decision, but there are still valid reasons to pick every single champion. I wouldn't put Morgue for Targon, she's the only one. Uh, have you run a six star Kaisa into the hard nightmares? Yes, I have. Kaisa dominates. Uh, Samira is one of the ones that, yeah, I'm really not interested in. So her six star, when you gain the attack token, give allies four power this round. To me, this just seems like a worse version of Vayne. Now, the good thing is this does hit your entire board, whereas Vayne's doesn't, but you're normally going to get four, at most eight power from this, really. Also, look like add drop, so we're going to hold off for a little bit. But yeah, Samira is one that I'm really not interested in personally. I have six star Kate and Jinx. I gotta say, I love Kate more because it's cooler. Wouldn't mind Jace instead of Jinx, even though Jinx is great. Yeah, I'm the same way. Like, I like Jinx as well, but I have a lot of fun with, with Caitlyn. I think she has a great six star. And I think she's a great champion, but I definitely understand and agree with the people that are a bit weaker. Everyone should be back. So I'll read through some of the different things you guys uh, talked about. Uh, so it's like there are stronger and weaker six stars, but there's no reason you shouldn't get any six star if you really want it. Uh, yeah, I would generally agree with that. Saving the Shreema Crystal for Azir. That is actually probably a decent idea. That being said, I, Kaisa, I can verify, is very good. I think Talia will be solid. But they did say Azir is... 
close to the top of the list as far as them adding champions. So early next year, we might see Azir. If you're willing to wait that long, then it could be pretty good. Uh, Darius six star is the wrong pick no matter what. Nora and Morgana are not great, but maybe you just want them for fun. Morgana at least lets you win faster. I am sad about the Darius six star, or at least for the people that said that they played with it, was hoping it would be better. I still want to test it out, but yeah, we'll see. It's it's sad to hear a lot of people don't like it, though. How is uh, six star misfortune? Six star misfortune is very, very good. So while in combat, your spells and skills deal four extra damage. This is excellent. And if you especially have her shock and awe, it is so good. She does tons of damage. Yeah, she feels fantastic with her six star. Like she used to be on the weaker side as far as champions, but with her constellation, she is up there as like one of the strongest. I'm holding uh, Frelia Nova, but I don't know if I want Ash. Yeah, I think if you have Freljord, if you really like Volibear, I think it is still fine to get the Volibear one. But I do think he's probably a bit on the weaker side as far as six stars go. Like still strong, but for a six star champion, a little bit weaker, kind of like Caitlyn. But if you really like Volibear, I think that's still valid. Ash, I think, is going to be very good and very strong. But if you don't really want to have the playstyle of especially, like, holding on to your Ash and then dropping her to nuke the Nexus, well, it sounds fun. If you don't like the on-strike relics and things like that, then I get holding off. Hopefully, we'll get, like, Lissandra soon-ish. But who knows? But yeah, if you're not interested in those two, holding on, I think, is not a... Not a bad idea. Uh, we definitely need targeting Nova Shard acquisition. Yes, yeah, so that would be <laughs> that'd be very nice. I still want uh, Leona Diana constellation. That would be a lot of fun. Diana is so so good. Yeah, I don't know if I want that Gatebreaker playstyle for Ash. My Ash already feels really strong at five stars, so I might skip it. Udia win. Yeah, Udia would be great. Really want six star Nar. Six star Nar would be a interesting one. Kind of feel like you'd play similar to like maybe a Misfortune. Where you're just being super aggressive early, you just have a little bit more control and removal. I fear some six stars are just going to completely break uh, broken three star champions. Yeah, Diana definitely runs into the risk of that, but the devs are aware of how strong a champion is, and I feel like they really don't give them quite the same upgrades. Like, I think the best example is looking at Vex and Yasuo. For Vex, like, every single node in the constellation is insane. Like, Explosive Finale, fantastic. Mana Flow, really good. The 6-star, I think, should be very strong because it has the same effect of Explosive Finale, except granting all of them Gloom, which then can trigger more kills. The bonus stars, though, 10 health and regen is massive. Support champs have utmost despair. Also massive. Extra damage for your Pie Toss and Perilous Pastry. Massive. Uh, damage you spells you acquire an adventure. Have Charging Sigil. Also insane. Like, so big. Family reunion having home turf. Good. Like, this is an epic upgrade, and it's kind of the least impactful. So, like, every single upgrade Vex has in her constellation is huge. So strong. So massive. Really, really good. You look at Yasuo, though, and for Yasuo, it's like, when you summon an ally, granted fury, it's a dragon. Okay, that's fine. Especially for Yasuo, it lets him scale up a little bit more. Mana flow's good. Typhoon, round end, recall stunned enemies. That's not bad, but for a six star, I think it's a little bit meh. I think it's going to be good, but yeah, not crazy. All right, 10 Nexus Health, 100 Gold. That's okay. Support champs have Everfrost. That's nice. That's a nice upgrade. Will of Ionia has Mage's Handbook. 
not doesn't really matter that much in my opinion. Spells you acquire in Adventures of Mana Potion. It's like okay. Uh, Blade Twirler has Warding Charm. This one is actually pretty good. I don't know. A lot of the Yasuo upgrades. It's not that they're bad, but there's pretty much none of them where I'm like, oh my word, that's insane. But a lot of the upgrades in the Vex Constellation, like they get me very excited. Like, man, I really want to play with this in game. It seems so good. Yasuo, not really the case. And I feel like that is very much just because Vex was a very weak champion before her constellation. And so they put a lot of upgrades in there to give her a ton of power. Yasuo, they already know he's insanely strong. And so they gave him more good upgrades that definitely made him stronger. They're still good upgrades, but none of them seem crazy. But again, Yasuo didn't need crazy upgrades to be good because he was already so strong. Yasuo's six star and relic were designed for each other, which is lame, in my opinion. Yeah, it. Yeah, that's true. Uh, not gonna lie, I thought Morgana's bonus stars were irrelevant, but in re actually in act, but in reality they're actually insane. Uh, let's look at Morgana. Spell Slinger is really nice. I'll definitely say that. And share my torment when you curse an enemy, grant allies one power. I think this is actually really gonna help you end games a lot faster. Uh, Nexus Health and Gold. Nexus Health is very solid. Support champs have Focusing Crystal. You are going to play a lot of spells, so this will give you some good scaling. But you're often not really playing your support champion. Uh, the Ascendant has Double Time Watch. This is definitely nice, because at 8 cost, you're pretty much never going to play this. But getting this... Just a couple cost reduction, like six, getting it down to like six or five is much more playable. And with Morgana, your game's going pretty long, so kind of not that big of a deal. Or like, yeah, the longer the match goes on, you're gonna have, you're gonna actually be able to play this. Uh, spells you acquire in Adventures of Hand Sensor. You do like to play a lot of spells. The one issue is I feel like a lot of the spells you acquire. You're playing a lot of her champion spell, which is not a spell you pick up. But there are still some solid ones you get. Uh, Startled Stomper has Bonded Bucklers. This will be nice since you're giving it Overwhelm. Does the Stomper have any other items? Okay, so it has Faded. I think the Overwhelm will be good, though, with the 6-star. Because with the 6-star, you're buffing up your unit's power and then making sure two of your units have Overwhelm. Yeah, I think that is solid everyone benefits from mana flow but i think morgana benefits one of the most i could definitely see that uh with with mana flow actually you could go for a turn one morgana build so you could go for like uh packed powder swain relic and then if you wanted, you could go for Echoing Spirit, or you could just go for Grand General's Counter Plan. So Morgana could actually go for a turn one build, which is probably pretty good. Uh, Morgana 5 star also makes it so you can play Lee Sin Dolly with Mana Gem into Morgana round 2. Yeah, that would be fine. I commented somewhere on Reddit that I got used to having 3 mana from so many 5 stars that playing a 3 star champ kind of feels bad and I got downvoted to hell. <laughs> uh, I definitely understand that because, like for me, I can't play a 1 star champion because I'm so used to having 2 starting mana that not having it feels pretty terrible. But, yeah, that's probably just a lot of people being jealous, because jealous and salty that um, you have so many champions that are maxed out or closer. Which, I mean, this is a game where people should be happy that there are whales, because that is how the game is surviving. Like... The fact that the game doesn't have any sort of PvP, I mean, well, the one kind of exception to that is the leaderboards, and 
I'm pretty sure Lemon Nation. Pretty sure he's also a whale. I think he bought a ton of the six star champions. And that's one of the reasons that he absolutely dominates. Now, I think he also probably puts a ton of work in to plan everything out. But I'm pretty sure he also bought pretty much everything. <laughs> also, do you think the Ari Relic is good? Yes, I think it's solid. I think it is a good balance where it's nice to have. You're getting some scaling on your Ari. The extra homecoming is very nice, especially because since your homecoming is granted double time watch, so are all the other copies of it. Uh, so I think it is definitely good, but it is not one that you feel like you have to have at all. Nice to have, but not like this is her best build. You have to use this. <laughs> uh, did you play Kaisa with just her five star? Was her five star really good? It looks good. Yes, I uh, played Kaisa with her five star. It was solid. And the whales don't affect me. So yeah, just go whale out pretty much. That's the thing. It's like the game, I think, is free to play friendly like six stars no they're not free to play friendly friendly definitely there's still you can still possibly get it and they're gonna make this better but just playing the game and getting a lot of the upgrades is pretty solid and if you are a free to play player and you've been playing since the constellation update you should have been able to get three to four um for free like, I think I, I think three to four of my constellations have been without buying anything. I think. But yeah, it's like the game needs whales to survive. Because otherwise the game is just going to get shut down. <laughs> like, I understand people hating on whales, especially in any like PvP game where everyone just gets shut down and can't compete. But like in this game, you can clear all the content with three star champions like it's hard and it potentially is not going to be very fun to consistently try to clear like the 6.5 with three stars but you can do it yeah it's it's not a pay to win game as far as actually having to clear the content i mean obviously it helps though so in that regards yes it is pay to win uh, these people are toxic as hell. Yeah, there's been there's been rough. Uh, two Novas have been given for free. Yeah, two Novas have been given for free, but also there was a lot of like golden star vessels that you could get. So the likelihood of getting one of your shards completed by now is pretty high. At least I was able to complete one of the shards, and then I have multiple others that are getting close. Like for me. I got one of my Bilgewater champions and I'm already back to 60. So obviously this part is RNG, but if you've cleared all of the like the three star and higher, uh, that gave you a bunch of constellation material and you probably were able to get one from these or you should be close. Oh joy, Flash gave me glorious evolution on Jace. No, no, I don't want one, negative one cost spells. Oh, uh, yeah, that is, that is bad. Yeah, I've been free to play from Constellations and got three Novas for free. Yeah. Honestly, I don't even consider myself a whale. Spend $100 a month, sometimes $150 if I really want a six star. Uh, I get cash back from my uh, CC, cash back from Google Play Points. And like $100, like two hours of work. It's nothing like people who drop thousands on Genshin every two weeks. Yeah, that's the thing. It's like... In this game, you definitely can wail and spend like... A thousand or so dollars. But it's... Compared to a lot of other games, it's not even close. Like, yeah, if you want to try to... Start playing any of the... Actual gacha games, those are insane. Also free to play in I have four. Yeah, that's the thing. People have tried to say, like, oh, it's impossible to get six stars as free to play. It's like, it's really not. Because we've had at least, yeah, like two platinum star vessels. So it's like guaranteed Nova Crystal. And then, especially when Constellations first came out, 
they added a bunch of rewards to like Aurelian Soul, Gallia, or well, everywhere, but especially all the higher ones that also gave you a bunch of constellation materials. And so, if you have been playing, you should be able to earn multiple of the six stars. Now, they're still really difficult to get right now, and the amount of acquisition we get for new Nova Shards is rough. 100%. But it's not at all like if you're a free-to-play player, you can't get a six-star champion. Now, it's going to be random, so the chance of you getting the champion you want, yeah, that's that's still going to be very difficult. But it is still very much possible and able to do it. I'm more limited in my wild fragments because I don't focus on one champ. Uh, the battle pass is going to really help folks that can step up from free to play at $10 a month. Yeah, but even people that are still free to play, you're getting one of the new champions and you're able to get them up to two stars for free from the battle pass. And I think you even get, I think you get 10 shards for that region as well. So you can kind of get them or get the materials to four star them. So even if you're not buying the battle pass, which you still if you can, I think it's a good idea to do. But even without that, you're still getting solid value from it. Like the battle pass, I saw some people complaining about it. I like this is only a positive. Even if you're only free to play, it's still just a positive. Uh, you can get a Nova Crystal from the $5 bundle, I think. Yeah, did did the uh, Constellation bundle give you a... Didn't that give you uh, one for P and Z at the very beginning? I think some of Ari's fragments are uh, lock, pay lock, and battle pass. Yes, so I think for the battle pass... You get Heimerdinger up to, like, you have enough to get him to two stars and ten crystals to get him to the four stars, but not both champions. I think one of them, like Ari here, is going to be behind the paywall, and then Heimerdinger is the champion you gain for free. But yeah, for $10, the battle pass gives you a ton. Like, while I am sad that we only had one star vessel... The fact that you were able to get, like, I think three Silver Star Vessels is pretty good. All right, let's go to the front. I think so yeah, a lot of kind of random stuff, which is all, all great. But yes, yeah, so we have a Bandle Gold Star Vessel. So this gives you 10 minimum um star crystals and then i think like 20 of the nova fragments so we have one gold which is sadly the only gold they do have raw star crystals in here which is nice okay so there's one silver star vessel two silver star vessels three silver star vessels okay so the fact you get three silver star vessels those are giving you minimum five uh, crystals for your like random regions so that's pretty good to finish out your kind of collection of these so we're getting at least 10 from the gold one there's 10 just guaranteed for i think ionia and then you're getting at least 15 for different random regions so while it is a little bit rough as far as the six stars for your four and five stars, after a couple months of battle passes, you should be having a pretty good income of these. I rolled 40 Nova Crystals from mine. Now I'm at 90, which sucks. This event pass was more about champion fragments than other currencies. Yeah. Hello. Menizeri? Zeris? Let's go with that. 
But yeah, I think from the, the battle pass, it is actually pretty good, the amount of resources. Really, the only thing we're lacking from it is six stars. Because the amount we're going to get as far as the star crystals is going to add up pretty quickly, I think. Because like right now, my biggest thing holding me back is being able to especially five star a lot of champions because I just don't have enough of the star crystals. But getting more every single every single month and then we having like guaranteed amounts for hopefully two regions. I think going forward, they're probably going to not do mono region anymore. So we did have a couple times where it's just P and Z, but I think especially for the battle pass, they're probably going to want to give us two regions going forward. It's definitely interesting. I think a lot of people are going to get to a point in a couple of months where they're going to have Nova Crystals one after the other. I'm at 40, 60 for most regions right now. Yeah, it is. It is going to kind of hit like that for probably a lot of people that like month after month, they're just going to complete, start completing their collection. What is the six star of Nora? Yeah, your portal summon level two champions. Uh, we're friends with the Venezuelan fam. Uh, Sun plays elite club. And not a club soccer. They know that I love all the Venezuelans on the Yankees. Yeah, Venezuelans are very good at especially baseball as well. Like a lot of baseball teams, or at least I know previously, I'm not as familiar anymore. But I know like even in Canada, where I lived for a while, a lot of the team was Venezuelans, which I thought was pretty awesome. How many Nova Crystals do you need for a six star? Uh, that is 100. Once you get to 100, a little button pops up that says like convert, and then it goes into a, a crystal. So if NASA's Renekton will not be level three, correct. That's how it works with like Aurelian Soul. He also summons level two champions. Uh, and then, yeah, uh, uh, the ascended champions are just at level two. Can NASA's constellation save him? Let's hope. Yeah, hopefully it's, I feel like NASA's is close to being good. I got blessed by RNG and saw the button of conversion once. Same, <laughs> same. All right, I think that's where we'll end it for uh, today. Nice talking with you all. Uh, tomorrow, I'm actually not going to be able to stream because I have to leave for the, the weekend. And so I have to spend tomorrow just editing a whole bunch of videos. So yeah, sadly, no stream tomorrow because I'll be busy editing. But a lot of fun. Uh, hanging out with you guys. Oh, hopefully see you back here on uh, on Monday. Hope you all have a great weekend. See ya.